My name is Sandy Eitnier. I'm the Executive Director for Surgery, and I'm the team lead for RPI W20. This is our standard work combination sheet, and it shows our agenda to the tack time of 20 minutes. Next is our team photo, and that's our team. The project form, our project name is to reduce the number of repeat adult visits to ER by, um, by supporting the CRT program to provide care to the clients. Our sponsor is Mike Higgins. Our process owner is Fiona O'Connor. One of the provincial targets is to um, reduce the number of um, readmissions to the mental health inpatient unit by 50% by the year 2017. Another of the provincial targets is to reduce the ER wait time by 50% by 2017 as well. So I'm going to go through a little bit of PQA data that we collected. So we know that 50% of the mental health patients that present to ER are admitted. We also know that the revisit rate of the mental health patient is 31% to ER. CRT referrals, which is the crisis response team, only 2% of their referrals come from the emergency room. And we also know that um, 24% of the patients that present to emergency have addiction issues and 14% have uh, depression. So if we go on to um, our target progress report, our lead time, we know presently our patients, our mental health patients are waiting 12.5 hours in eMERGE. So we would like to reduce this to 6.25, a 50% reduction. Presently, only 70% of our um, mental health patients are being discharged from emergency with a referral to one of the three um, community services, which is transition outreach team, uh, our crisis response team, and a transition care team. So we would like to reduce that to zero. Uh, our client revisits to emergency department is... Our client revisits to ED is 30%, which we aim to reduce to 15%. Currently, our current um, value stream map shows that once the patient comes to eMERGE and the decision is made to discharge the patient, that they are receiving um, referrals to our transition care team. Some are leaving without any referrals. Some are leaving on their own will. But as we go through the process, the crisis response team is getting referrals at the back end. So if we look at our future state map, we want to bring that back end to the front end and have the referrals go to all three of our community, res uh, community re resource teams. And then um, our TAC time, right now it's, it's 168 minutes, and that is for a two-person team. And our, the TAC time is the demand over the available time. And, um, <laughs> sorry, and we derived this by the average of um, five, on the average of five uh, referrals per day to the CRT team. And we also performed a SWOT analysis. Hi there, my name is Christina Chernick and I'm an emergency psychiatric nurse at the General Hospital. I'm here to introduce Kaizen number one, everyone gets support. Pre-Kaizen, prior to this RPIW, patients were discharged from the ED with a TCT referral in a formal process. They may or may not have been referred to the crisis response team in an informal way like a telephone call from the EPN. No referrals were ever made to the transitional outreach team, and only 2% of referrals were made to the crisis response team from the ED. Because CRT and TOT were not utilized as referral options, some patients received no mental health services post-discharge. Post-Kaizen. During this RPIW, a formalized referral process was created modeling the ER referral process for the transitional care team. New referral forms were created for CRT, 
and TOT was introduced as a service in the ED for clients needing addiction outreach. The new referral forms are currently being trialed in the ED at the general. This idea street demonstrates the lack of patient awareness of available supports. The roles and responsibilities of the three teams were also clarified during the RPAW and criteria documents were created. TOT provides intensive support of the patient's addictions, improves community function, and improves quality of life for our clients. They can provide assistance with residencies, social services, transportation, teaching, and monitoring their progress. The crisis response team provides telephone services, outreach services, crisis intervention, mental health and psychosocial assessments, and liaisons with community resources for mental health clients. The transitional care team provides daily monitoring for mental health clients. They assist with clear communication between the client and the psychiatrist. They can provide reminders about medications and follow-up appointments, and they can plan for residential and financial needs for our clients. Standard work has been created for the referrals by the emergency psychiatric nurse to the crisis response team and the transitional outreach team. Hello, my name is Sarah Beer and I'm a member of the transitional outreach team at the Addiction Treatment Centre. Part of looking at Kaizen 1 was creating a referral form for each of the support teams that Kristen just mentioned. Prior to looking at the referral forms, there was only a referral for the transitional care team. We were able to create standard referral forms for each support team. Here are the copies of each of them. Standard work was created on handling community referrals from the emergency department to the support teams appropriately. Good afternoon, my name is Barry Apperly and I work with the crisis response team. I will be reporting on Kaizen number two how not to go to the ED. This RPIW worked on standardized CRT support flow. The current state looked like this. CRT would receive a referral from the community. An assessment would be made. Uh, client in need of a doctor's assessment at e ED for possible admission to inpatient, mental health, or detox. This idea sheet which helps clients avoid the ED for medical clearance to detox. The future state looks like this. CRT receives a referral from the community. Assessment is made. Client is in need of an assessment by a, a, doctor, by a doctor for possible admission to the inpatient mental health or to detox. CRT now has the option of avoiding the ER and using the meadows clinic for addiction clients needing medical clearance to detox. We also trialed the Mental Health Clinic 330 psychiatrist appointment to help clients avoid the ED for treatment or direct admission to inpatient <coughs> mental health. This is a decision tree for the client under the influence of drugs or alcohol. This shows CRT assessment criteria and determines services needed for a client. This RPIW trialed the 330 emergency psychiatry appointment at the mental health clinic to avoid the client from going to the ED. With more consultation from psychiatrists and management, this appointment time may be implemented in the future. This is a doctor schedule, oh, sorry. That was a doctor's schedule showing the 3.30 emergency spot. And this was a standardized work form for CRT to, imp to use that spot in the future. Thank you. Hi there, my name's Lee Keller. I work for Transition Care with the Mental Health Clinic. Um, I'm talking about hotspots and this idea sheet that Jan is going to put up, demonstrates an issue of repeat visits of mental health clients to the ED. Uh, st uh, stats indicate that 38 people were responsible for 100 visits in a month period, uh, which has been dubbed hotspots. In response to this information, standard work has been proposed to identify how the needs of these hotspotters could be better addressed. Uh, this would happen 
when uh, an identifier is initiated through uh, SCM by the emergency psych nurse. This indicator would be part of a report that management would review on Mondays. The client with the highest number of visits will be chosen and information gathered to complete a thorough psychological assessment. And an additional meeting would take place on Wednesday that would develop and refine a care plan with additional community supports to address the unique needs of these clients. This care plan would be shared with various outreach and community teams for input and guidance for these patients. A weekly review would be done to monitor the care plans and any further presentations that those patients may have and suggest changes to the care plan to address those issues. Hi, I'm Tim Poole, I'm the Director of Medical Imaging uh, and also a participant in the uh, RPIW number 20. Uh, Kaizen number three was to reduce the cycle time of the crisis response team, so CRT, as we were calling it all week. Uh, following the crisis response team was uh, hard, to say the least. This team roams all over the city. Uh, they follow crisis to crisis. It's kind of like following a wildfire in northern Saskatchewan. When the wind changes, they go the other way in a big hurry. So um, we tried to, uh, to follow them and document the steps as best we could. So uh, they ranged in uh, length and, and variety of calls. Uh, the stuff that Don and I will present is basically how we try to reduce the waste and remove that waste from the crisis response team to aid and uh, benefit the patient. So really what will happen is the patient will get a much better experience as that happens. So uh, the time observation form standardizes the steps now that uh, a normal crisis response would take. We documented that into a uh, uh, standard work combo sheet. So as you see, as the, uh, the crisis happens, the, it has a workflow that goes through and we documented all that stuff. Uh, the spaghetti diagram that follows is, again, a typical response to the YWCA in, in Regina where they go all over the city, they come back. It usually ends up with a stop in the emergency department or, or not, depending on whether the patient will, uh, will comply or not. Uh, we followed that with idea sheets of how we can get the waste out of the system. So, uh, oh, this is the <coughs> standard work, the load chart, percent load chart. <laughs> I can see it there. <laughs> Percent load chart documented as well. Once we did the standard work in the time lapse, the, the, that standard load chart was graphed and uh, put into practice. So this is now an idea sheet. And one of this idea sheet particularly documented the, a visit to uh, going to the Meadows Clinic versus RGH where a lot of uh, efficiencies were introduced. So uh, that idea sheet came into, uh, while the patients were in the clinics now, this sheet will uh, help the physicians and the uh, uh, psychiatric nurses uh, get medical clearance for the patients that need to be uh, get into a different service. So it'll actually reduce the time that the patient spends in these areas uh, and help them get standard work into those areas. This is how the sheet is as well. That. I'm short, but not as short as Terry. Uh, my name is Dawn Calder, and I'm, I'm an executive director with Clinical Support as well, and I'm a participant in this RPIW. Uh, this idea sheet uh, had to do with translation. As uh, Tim talked about, the CRT sees lots of different kinds of clients, and from time to time they need a translator. They have gone to great lengths, not only trying to phone to find people, but, but actually hailing cabs to hope they have the right language that they need. Thanks to Glenn Perchy, uh, we've put them in touch with the call line that you can call and get a translator. Uh, the next one is simply the standard work in relation to how they're going to do that. And the percent load chart shows them taking, in a pre-sense, two hours uh, to find a translator, and now it's two minutes. The next idea sheet talked about needing standard work to guide when one versus two CRT members could go on a call and then followed by the standard work in relation to that. There was also an idea sheet about the CRT workers spending time looking up information on innovation, for example, and finding it out of date. And so like other folks in the mental health clinic, we got them access to SCM to provide them more timely and thorough client information. They also spent some time looking for, for files, old information in paper files, and our idea was to see if we could scan some of that information to attach to the current e-clinical record, particularly things like their safety score sheets, and also to, to trial the idea of a laptop in the community when they're on their calls, either in the car or when they're waiting for a client. These next ones are the time observation and standard work combination sheets to reflect the new process with the electronic documentation and the laptop re with remote data entry. 
The spaghetti diagram simply shows where the Meadows Clinic is. You've heard about our using that. And lastly, the percent um, load chart, we've tried to combine all of the changes. You'll see the wait time for the medical clearance uh, goes from 2 to 12 hours down to 1 hour at the Meadow. And also the documentation, we're estimating a change from 60 minutes to 30. Hi, my name is Lynn Sabo, and I'm a team lead for the detox center. Uh, Kaizen number four, we performed a 5S on two cabinets in the CRT building. Here are the pictures of the pre-5S. Pre-5S score was one, and the pictures of the post-5S, and the post-5S score was 2.9. Hi, my name is Jan Bessie. I'm an executive director with clinical support working on my lean leader certification and I was a sub-team lead for this RPIW. I'm going to talk a little bit about the RPIW uh, newspaper. Uh, we ended up accomplishing a great deal over the course of this week. We did end up with four um, problems that are about 75% solved at this point in time, I would say. Um, one of them is needing to understand the reason for the 30% revisit rate, and so we need to do some more auditing and following to see what, that, um, what, what we can determine around that. We've talked about the standard work for medical clearance, and we still need to do more work to develop those alternatives, potentially look at some pre-printed order uh, work uh, for the nurses in the emergency room and ensure that we get that process um, right. The other thing that is outstanding is the 330 appointment at the mental health clinic. Uh, currently it's not possible to put that into place, um, but we are hopeful that down the road that will be, that will be, ha that will happen. There was also eight issues identified for the uh, team in, that we were not able to address during this RPI double U week, but we have, um, identified for them for you going forward. In terms of our targets, um, our lead time um, target uh, was to go from 12.5 hours to 6.25 hours. We actually went up during this week to 17.5 hours. We couldn't implement some of the Kaizen ideas, so we couldn't demonstrate the results during the week, but we are confident that the results targeted can be achieved with continued work on the ideas generated. Our defects, we did a, a pro, improve by uh, 51%. And as Sandy noted, we were just talking about those three teams in terms of referral, the TOT, the CRT, and the TCT. Our referrals to the emergency uh, department stayed the same because the opportunity did not arise to test the Kaizen ideas. But again, we are confident that these targets can be met. Hi, hopefully I can get this done in about one minute. Uh, my name is Rhonda Ryerson, and I am a client participant in this RPIW. We did three Kaizans. Number one, uh, standard work established to ensure that everyone gets support. This means personal contact and referral for clients leaving the emergency department. Kaizen number two, how not to get to the ED, standard work draft and process established open appointment with psychiatrist for 3.30, standard work established for hot spotting, and CRT will increase their continued involvement with clients. Kaizen number three, uh, CRT cycle time reduction. So SCM and innovation computer programs to assist with the CRT workflow, and created a standard work for safety of clients and the CRT. Uh, and documentation that can be done in the field using these laptops and the stream, streamlining the interpretation services. Um, we have increased knowledge of services of CRT, TCT, and TOT. Uh, we've done team building between these services and therefore that provides clients with the service in the right place at the right time. Uh, we did uh, uh, the CRT office filing cabinet and coffee supply room. Uh, increased knowledge of lean tools and had a great, uh, great time doing Kaizen. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, here's a list of the thank yous. I just want to thank our sponsor and our uh, process owner. I won't have time to mention everybody else, but I really want to give a big thank you to Rhonda, our patient participant. We did have one other that uh, patient participant who was not able to be with us today. And um, another thank you to Sensi Shuno and Terry for a great week, and Nancy as well. And um, also to our senior leadership team, who was a great support to us throughout the week in our um, report outs. Thank you. <laughs>